Um, a, a while back, I got a, some specimens of uh, what they call a superworm, Zephobus morio. It's a, a relative of the common mealworm, Tenebrio molitor. Uh, a school had these as part of their curriculum, and, and at the end of the school year, the teacher said, Hey, you want these beetles? They turned into beetles, black, looked like a mealworm beetle, not that big. And I said, sure, I'll take them. And beetles laid lots of eggs. They got lots of larvae. Larvae got to be adults, but they never turned into beetles. And I suspected that they were just overcrowded, and that was preventing them from pupating. And so I did some research, and sure enough, that was the case. So uh, I raised them in a, a critter keeper full of um, soil. This is uh, mostly um, coconut fiber soil that you can get um, for reptiles and such and they um, and I just fed them um, I use an egg biscuit for finches and fish food they like that and just a, a, a chunk of apple uh, for moisture and they did really well but they they wouldn't pupate so anyway you can see if I can find any in here oh yeah see you just burrow in the soil um, so the key is to separate them. So I put them each in an individual uh, chamber of this storage box, and I left them in there for uh, almost two weeks, and uh, with no food or anything. And sure enough, they started to pupate. So this is what I've got so far for pupa, lots of them, and uh, I'm not sure how long these will take. To mature, but then those will hatch out into adult beetles who will mate and lay eggs, and, and I can um, keep the colony going. So, what I'm going to do here is continue to empty this container of dirt into this one and sift through it and pick out the larvae and um, isolate them so that they can uh, mature into a pupa. It's been 12 days since I shot the last part of this video, and most of the pupa have hatched. You can see some of these are turning a little darker. In fact, um, some of these, you can see the legs have gotten very dark on them. So, and then a bunch of them have emerged into adults. You can see this white one here is just freshly emerged and it hasn't yet hardened its exoskeleton and then some that are a little farther along are sort of light brown and here's one that has turned fully black so a bunch of them in here so these will start uh, mating and laying eggs. I've got some food in here for them. And I still have some larvae left. Most of these have pupated. One, two, three, four, five. Got five, six larvae left. And I will transfer these pupa into here just to give them a little more space. And then I separated these adults from the pupa because it's possible, I think, for the adults, if they were hungry, they might try and feed on the pupa. I, I didn't see any of that. But still, I think it's probably best just to keep them separate. This is the other box of larvae. Yeah, most of these are pupated too. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine larva, seven pupa, six pupa. So, looks like we're well on our way to making this uh, a reproducing colony. So, this is what I think is going on. Um, if the larvae are concentrated on a food source, uh, they're uh, they're vulnerable if they pupate there because the larvae can eat the pupa. The pupa have a fairly thin exoskeleton, whereas the larvae have a fairly thick one. And um, this one's getting ready to pupate, so it might not do it. But if you touch the larvae, they will thrash around. So if a larva tried to eat another larva, it would. Um, It would be difficult. They'll like thrash around. This one's not really doing it anymore. It's getting ready to pupate. This is the last larvae that hasn't pupated. Um, but the uh, the pupa are vulnerable to this. 
and uh, to being eaten. Uh, the pupa will also thrash around if you touch them. Yeah, see? And this also helps protect them from being eaten. Here's another adult that's just emerged, so it hasn't hardened yet. So, uh, I, I think, this is just speculative, but I think the this behavior has evolved that they won't pupate unless they're isolated from other larvae to prevent them from being um, eaten. I think that makes the most sense. So most of them have, except for this larva, have pupated. And then these are the adults I have so far. Quite a few. So these adults will start uh, laying eggs now and I'll have another generation. Th these uh, adults also have um, a scent, uh, like a chemical, that's probably a deterrent to predators. Um, other members of the family, Tinebrionidae, have a very strong chemical defense. Uh, so that's, that makes sense. Uh, this is uh, part of my collection of um, Tenebrionid beetles. It's a big family, uh, probably around 20,000 species. And you can see there's quite a lot of variation in uh, body size, body shape, uh, texture of elytra. Some are smooth, some are sort of rough and pebbled. Some have extensions on the abdomen. Uh, a lot of these in this collection are desert species and in the Chihuahuan and Sonoran and Mojave deserts they're quite common in the southwestern United States. Um, you can find many species in the same area. Uh, nearly all, if not all of these, have a strong chemical defense. They'll stand up on their head and release uh, uh, strong smelling chemical from their abdomen which deters predators. They have a very thick exoskeleton which I think helps them both defensively from predators as well uh, and also keeps them from drying out. Many of these the wing covers are sutured closed um, either without wings or vestigial wings underneath and this also helps keep them from from drying out, but a very interesting family. Uh, they're very generalistic, you know, the body size is average, the leg length is average, the color is black, there's a few that have some white on them, but um, I think of them like crows, uh, generalists. They're just scavengers, there's nothing specialized really about them at all, and they're very, very successful. Uh, a strategy of being adaptable and generalistic is a good one. It's a good strategy to be a specialist too, but it's more difficult to adapt to a changing environment if you're a specialist because you're dependent on your specialty. So um, I've always been intrigued by these Tenebriana beetles uh, and I think they're really fascinating. I'm uh, enjoying seeing all the little variations and, and all the many, many species.